Hey guys, this is Pete here, and um, I thought I'd do a little short uh, ZBrush tutorial on aspects of making a stylized character. A um, little different than my normal stuff of doing realism and things like that. Um, and for an example, we're using the boony little weird rabbit-like ghoul character that's for sale at um, Mold3D as a 3D print file. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd just use him as an example because he has a bunch, he's obviously a stylized character and there are some little tricks that you can use to kind of get certain effects, surface feel, and um, yeah, just little things I've learned along the way. So I thought I'd do a short tutorial on that for you guys. And I thought, let's just use, I'm just going to use his head because it's a nice smooth shape. And get rid of the ground here. A few little weird artifacts here and there. And uh, just a quick word that, yes, this is you know, the interface I use for ZBrush, it's just a customized sort of desktop. And I've just sort of put my tools that I use often in, you know, handy places. Easy to figure out how to do this stuff if you just go to the uh, Pixelogic website. Um, you can find out how to customize your um, interface. Easy stuff. But, uh, yeah, so I'll be grabbing tools from unusual places here. Uh, this isn't really a tutorial on how to use ZBrush. So um, I'll do my best to explain what these tools are and um, how to use them. Let's see here. There's a lot of stuff showing here that normally isn't. So there's like little artifacts like, let's see, I'm gonna turn on this stronger smooth tool here. some creases and bumps and things that normally we don't care about because they're hidden on the final character. All right. Just to keep this easy, I'm going to just turn this into a uh, Dynamesh. I forget how high I can go with this thing. Let's go down one level and just delete the uh, subdivision levels before we Dynamesh. And I have my Dynamesh tools here. Normally they're under geometry. Um, yeah, let's see what happens if I just hit this here. Let's start low just to see where I am. I can't remember the scale I'm working at, honestly. All right, that seemed to work high enough res to start. What I thought I'd do is just um, get rid of his eyes and, and make them from scratch again. Because the, the tutorial I wanted to show is just how to do kind of these kind of crisp yet somewhat soft edges um, that you see in a lot of stylized characters. Uh, and let's just get rid of one of the eyes just to keep things easy. By that, I'm going to just smooth it out and then sort of fill it in. And I'm just using a clay build-up tool to kind of quickly add mass here to this hole. Just fill this thing in crudely until it's somewhat flush with the surface. Then I'm going to uh, drag rectangle release to get the mask. Once I do that, we dynamesh again. And now we have a, a surface. The hole is gone. Right 
And now I'm just shift uh, drawing on the surface to um, do that smoothing just to even it out. Right. So none of these Rarely, uh, when I'm sculpting in ZBrush, do I do a, a sculpting move and you do one thing and it's done and ta-da, everything's perfect. Um, there's a lot of finagling and back and forth to do, uh, depending on the effect you're trying to get with a shape. Uh, one of the first things I did with this guy should be pretty straightforward for most folks. Let me get a different alpha here. For some reason I have lazy mouse turned on. Let's get rid of that. And I'm just trying to draw with the alpha and mask off the area that I want to turn into uh, indentation. I'm just kind of creeping up on it. And I haven't done anything fancy to the uh, the mask or the brush as far as changing the focus or anything like that. And I'm just trying to get it close to the size and shape I want. I'm going to be doing some pulling and pushing once I have the, uh, the eye made or pulled in. All right, so we have our mask and I'm going to reverse it by control tapping, whoops, control tapping outside the figure there. And then I'm going to use our transpose tool to um, shift it inward. I don't know if we'll end up with an exact copy of the other eye, but I'll try and get it close. Now before I Z remesh this, I am going to Kind of soften this edge from where it is, just because we have all those stretched out polys. Can kind of make use of them and get rid of this corner before I remesh. Pretty good. You can even use the move tool to kind of push it a little further. That works for me. All right, so unmask it. Get off the character and control drag the mask out and we will remesh again. So if we go back, you can see our stretched out polys. And after tiny meshing, everything's evened out again. I'm going to take down the strength of my smooth brush here. Because I don't want to overdo it. So I'm using that edge to kind of create Uh, that rough edge I'm using to kind of create the softer edge that I want by kind of gently relaxing it. And I'm going to show you a couple tools to use to um, take it a little further. higher res you can see here in the lips that we lost some resolution but that's okay we're just playing around here take up the five five ish hit the D button twice to uh, set the dynamesh off again great Let's smooth it just a tad I'm going to create this kind of undercut feeling here. 
which for me is a good way to um, get the shadows to show up better when it's rendering. Just gives a little bit of character to that socket. So I'll just mask it off again. And then just uh, control tapping on the model will blur it. Now if I wanted to sharpen it, I would control alt tap. Oops. Right? Okay, but we want it blurred, softened, and now I'm going to invert that, that mask there. And I'm going to use my move tool. Well, we could use the transpose. Let's just do that. One second. I accidentally turned off the tool. All right. Transpose. Just going to go a little deeper with it by pushing down the middle and holding shift. See the middle here, the little white mark? It'll go in line with the direction. If I hold shift and push on that and I'm just going to use E for scaling just make that bigger all right so that looks about right Again, I'm going to smooth a little bit before I unmask it. There's a benefit to having areas kind of isolated. While you've got them, make the best of it. And I'm going to unmask and then Dynamesh again. I want this... Um, I want this to be a very gradual transition here, so I'm going to make it the smooth brush a little stronger and then just sort of get rid of these edges here. But not all the way, just a bunch of it. Okay. Now I'm going to use my move tool here which I use a lot it's one of my most used tools and I'm just going to shape it a little bit by kind of pushing things around a little bit without going too far I want to be careful not to deform the outer edge too much because I want to keep the nice curves on that outside but without doing too much, you can really change your character's look and expression without too, too many drastic moves there. Okay, the next thing I would do at this case is I would crispen this edge here. You could leave it where it is. It doesn't look bad. Oops. I'm always looking at the profile too to see what I've damage I've done and what I need to fix if, I, if anything and so these guys are eh, roughly in the bit same ballpark they would require a little bit more work to kind of get it just so one thing I'd like to do is um, tighten it up a little bit on both sides I might use the pinch tool which does what it claims to do compresses that area within the brush uh, icon there. Give it a little bit of a harder edge. See, I'm creeping up on it. I'm not really doing a huge um, 
I'm not like squashing it like like that, you know, I'm just doing it very gradually because I don't want to go too far. I think I can push this a little bit further. I think I'm going to mask this off a little bit soft, with a soft kind of edge to it. Tap it a couple times. Now with the move tool, I'm just going to push this cheek up a little, leaving the rest of it in place. Opposite direction there. And there you go. Without many fancy tools, obviously this is a little bit off. It's a little too close here. Let's move it while I'm talking. With the, uh, gonna move it with the uh, transpose tool very simply. Soften up the edges that got a little squashed together. Have his eye back to where it should be more or less just turn everything back on here's our goofy little dude all right I hope that little tip was handy in some way to you um, look for more tips and tutorials on my site I'll be um, switching to a new site pretty soon and I plan on selling a bunch of uh, different kinds of tutorials and lessons at a reasonable price. So I hope this was helpful in some way. All right, check back with me again. Thanks. Bye.